It's funny how everyone is freaking out about AI taking their jobs nowadays. Writers, programmers, authors, everyone is seeing what conversation AIs like ChatGPT or Midjourney can do, and they think, wow, we're screwed. But if you're a traditional artist like me, you're like, man. Sure, a lot of digital artists, illustrators, anime artists, 3D artists are worried that soon their work will be copied and upscaled by a machine and that they'll basically lose their business. But here, I'm talking about traditional artists, like old-fashioned guys like me, painters, using the same old pigments used since the dawn of time. Oh, and by the way, it's not the first time that I cover this subject on my channel. I already have a video where I cover the subject of AI and art more from an existentialist perspective. It's a more philosophical approach. And if you're interested, you can watch it because it can be a great compliment to what I'm going to say in this video. But today, I want to focus more on the practical implications of AI and how it can be a transformative technology for the art world in the medium to long term. All right, let's start. I'm going to explain why, contrary to many people, I'm not worried about AI as an artist. So I'm not worried about AI taking my job because I'm a painter. And us painters, we've been through the exact same thing when photography was invented back in the 19th century. Our jobs have already been taken. If you consider that the job of a painter is to make pictures that look like things, you can say that we've been jobless for nearly two centuries now, and we only continue for the fun of it. You can't deny that photography was a revolutionary invention, not only for the art world, but for the world in general, and in a lot of ways, very interesting ways. This invention was very similar to the advance of AI nowadays. Today, AI has a much greater reach, so every creative field is experiencing what us painters had to live through when photography was invented. Authors are worried, writers, programmers even. And it's just like painters in the 19th century when they were worried that photography would dethrone them as picture makers. And that's basically what happened. It's very similar. So about AI taking everybody's job. Well, first for us artists, it's not like we have real jobs anyway, so we don't have a lot to lose. Whew, what a relief. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure if it's uh, anything we should really be happy about, but most artists don't make a living solely out of selling their art anyway. If you're making art for the money, you clearly have the, the wrong career path and your priorities are not in the right place. Most artists and some pretty good ones, very talented ones, have to teach on the side or complement their earnings by selling prints or selling merch of different types. Most artists have nothing to lose with AI because their art doesn't sell anyway in the first place and they just make it because it's worth making. That's what being an artist is all about, making art because it's worth making. And frankly, it's always been like this. Van Gogh only ever sold one single painting in his lifetime and now he's worth millions. The myth of the starving artist is exaggerated, sure, but it's still based on something true. It's very hard to sell your art. You can make a great living as an artist if you're smart, but it's still very hard to sell originals. If anything, maybe AI will provide artists new ways to monetize their creative talents. You never know when a new technology can come and change the game and create new opportunities for artists. Two years ago, remember, it was supposed to be NFTs. People actually tried to get artists involved in the NFT space, but yeah, looking back, now that most NFT projects have crashed and now that most rugs have been pulled, it appears that it was all fake. The NFT space did not create new opportunities for most digital artists. It has been as elitist as the regular art market. Getting artists involved was just an excuse to get more people in, as most NFT projects ended up being computer generated anyways. It appears now more clearly than ever after the sort of NFT crash that 
This hype was mostly an excuse to bring more people into the crypto space so that the early investors could buy their way out of it by selling useless JPEGs to gullible newcomers. I'm not going to rent on NFTs here because it's not the place and I can make a two hours video. By the way, if you're interested, let me know. If you want a video about NFT, I can make one, but I'm pretty sure that it's all news now. I'm pretty sure that nobody cares about NFTs anymore, so moving on. As I was saying, artists were overall not making a lot of money before, and I don't think AI will change a lot here. And the least it can do is change nothing, basically. Artists will still do their art, it's going to be business as usual. And more generally, the big scare that AI is going to take everybody's jobs is based on the incorrect assumption that it's a zero-sum game. It's not like jobs are created or destroyed, they change, they evolve. The job of the painter has changed before with photography. And it will do the same now with AI, it will just evolve. Nowadays, most painters incorporate photography as a tool in their repertoire to make their paintings. And it will be the same with AI, at least for artists, I'm pretty sure of it. The only thing that I'm not sure about is how fast this evolution will happen, how groundbreaking it will be, how disruptive it will be for the rest of society. I'm not sure. The trick with a technology breakthrough like this one is not that it puts people out of business, but that it changes all businesses. The question is, can you evolve faster than the technology? In my opinion, the world is never going to be the same with AI, just like the art world was not the same after photography was invented. But if you're an artist, you can clearly see how it will probably launch a new and exciting era where most creative fields will have to reinvent themselves to prove that they're still worth existing, just like painters had to do before. Let's see how the art world had to reinvent itself after the 19th century. In the beginning, photography was used mostly by painters to settle figuration debates like how horses gallop, for example, and it became, at first, a new instrument to create a sort of a scientific standard of figuration to help painters paint things more realistically. And meanwhile, early photography, as a genre, was trying to mimic painting, for the most part. Since likeness and accuracy was an, an unwinnable battle for painters, they picked the only battle they could win at the time, color and expression. And that's how Impressionism was born, and later Post-Impressionism and Expressionism. It emerged as uh, a response to the dilemma posed by photography. Why paint if you want to make an image of something that looks like something? Painting wasn't perfect at figuration, but at least at the time, it had color. So color became the big thing for Impressionists and Post-Impressionists. Later, though, the technology improved again, and color alone was not enough, so artists needed to be even more innovative and imaginative with shapes and subjects if they wanted to create images that photography couldn't create. And that's what gave birth to what we know today as modern art. Overall, photography didn't put artists out of business. It forced them to reinvent themselves and invent a new form of art. And I believe that will be the same with AI. If you consider the technical ability, abandon all hopes of beating the machine. AI wins all day, every day. And if it's not better than humans today, it will be in the future. I'm, I can guarantee. Fortunately, that's just speaking about the technical side. And there's more to art than technique. We all know that. Art is a human experience. It's something a human shares with another human being to fulfill an existential need. See my previous video about it if you want to explore this theme further. I'm not going to elaborate here. It's all in my previous video. But the main idea is AI doesn't make art. It makes pictures. But it makes pretty good pictures and pretty soon most AI-made pictures will be much better than human-made ones. At least it will make them a lot faster. At least digital images, of course, not talking about real paint. 
which is kind of the difference. A computer can make better pictures than you. Like, that's, that's, you have to deal with it. It took chess players a long time to accept the superiority of the machine, but once they did, they used computers to train and improve at their own game. And that's what I'm talking about. Computers have not made the game of chess irrelevant. To the contrary, they've raised the overall level of most human players. The computer doesn't care that it plays chess, it's just executing a program. And it's the same for image generating programs. It's just a very powerful program and it's going to become exponentially powerful. And it's going to be better than you. It's going to be better than everyone. If it's not today, it will be tomorrow. And denying it will be like being this painter holding on to the hope and insisting that they are still more accurate than what a photography could do. No, the technology is here to stay and it's going to improve consistently. Sure, it will stumble and be goofy in the beginning, and you can, you can make fun of this while it lasts, but it's not going to be a long-term thing. It will soon become extremely strong. Still, remember what I'm talking about. I'm talking about making images, making pictures, not making art. And it's going to be strong at making pictures. We've already seen examples of AI-generated pictures winning art contests like Jason Allen's AI-generated work, which took first place in the digital category at the Colorado State Fair. It doesn't mean much, as it's not a major contest, but it was a first. The most recent example is Girl with Glowing Earrings by Julian Van Deken, who used the AI mid-journey to help create it and then Photoshop to fine-tune the result. And this time, it's a more reputable place because this contest was deciding what to hang in the Mauritius while the lady with the pearl earring was on loan. If it feels strange for you that AI can win art contests, remember that AI doesn't make art. Humans make art using AI. AI make pictures, humans make art with it. This lady with the glowing earring has been made by an artist, a human. It has been retouched with Photoshop, it's been submitted to the contest by a human. It's not art made by a machine, it's humans making art using a machine. And in this case, a text to image program like Midjourney is not really different from a camera. It's simply a more elaborate tool. You can hate on the fact that artists use AI as a, just another tool at their disposal to make art, but I don't. As a painter, if I'm struggling to paint a landscape and then a photographer simply comes with a camera and snaps, just pushes a button and end up with a better image than my pathetic attempts, I can't be jealous. It's simply something that I chose to do. It's a different type of art. I'm not bothered too much by AI. The only thing is that maybe there needs to be a new category for AI-generated art in contests, and I'm sure that this is what will happen more and more in the future. Just like photography became its own artistic genre, AI-generated images or hybrid images will have their own category alongside painting, drawing, sculpting, etc. And it's going to be a new domain of art. Now, a big concern is copyright and intellectual property. Mostly the problem comes from the data sets used by the AI to generate their images. It scrolls the web to find billions of references and very often simply steals. <laughs> so far, AIs can't create something from nothing, only copy and combine what they've been fed. And their data sets commonly consists of billions of images used without the artist's permission. There's even a lawsuit going on against Midjourney and Stability AI accused of making a lot of money while the artists and creators whose work is involuntarily included in the data sets see nothing in return. There are several videos on YouTube talking about the legal implications of this copyright issue and this lawsuit, which I'm not very familiar with, so I'm not going to elaborate here. I'll put a couple of recommendations in the description if you want. In my opinion, this is just 
growing pain from a technology that's just emerging and will soon be settled and the copyright issues will be fixed. Yeah, it doesn't work properly today and it's even kind of disgusting like AI images with remnants of signatures proving that they really actually steal pieces here and there and just make a weird disturbing collage of stolen art. So far it's really bad, but I'm pretty sure that it will be fixed in the future. Not that human artists will get a share of the money made by image generating companies, simply that they will find a way to avoid the issue of copyright by increasing the depth of the system and removing any trace of the original pictures in the dataset. After all, that's how human artists create. Picasso famously said that bad artists copy, good artists steal. That's what we call our influences. Most man-made art is an elaborate collage of various styles and influences. The more you have, the more original you can become, paradoxically. If you only have one influence and only copy the style of a single person, that's bad, that's, that's blatant copy. But if you're influenced by a multitude of great artists, you can take enough from each source to create something very unique to you. The only thing left to do is add your own personal touch and voila, you have your own style. Human artists are capable of using their influences with enough depth and subtlety so that it's never blatant art theft. And surely AI will be good enough to do the same very soon. Trust me, if there is a lot of money involved, the issue will be fixed. And it won't be fixed, unfortunately, by paying artists fairly for their contribution. You can think that it's unfair, but as an artist, just because you're influenced by, let's say, Picasso, doesn't mean you owe anything to his family. Overall, this copyright issue is, in my opinion, just temporary and will be resolved soon enough. There's going to be a lot of problems we'll need to face with AI-generated images, but copyright? will be one of the easiest ones to fix. The ongoing war against AI art is already lost. The arguments in defense of human artists are laudable and they come from people with very good intentions, but again, they won't stop the technology from evolving. Let's just say that digital artists have all the right reasons in the world to be angry that their work is scrapped for data, but they can only win a couple of legal battles. And in the end, it won't change the game on the long term. The war against AI art is lost because it's not a war. It's not man versus machine. It's just man using a paintbrush versus man using a computer. And I hear the argument that AI doesn't take skills, so it shouldn't be called art. Sure, maybe we don't call it art, but it doesn't change anything. In most cases, images produced by AI are better than what most skilled artists can do with a brush. The argument that producing art with the help of an AI is wrong because it doesn't require skills is missing the point. Is photography art? You can say that compared to painting, it doesn't require skills. It's as simple as pushing a button, right? You might be confident that it's art now, but it was a real debate in the past before people realized that it actually takes skills to take a good photo and that a noob with $10,000 worth of gear is still worse than a pro with a disposable camera. Plus, using a text-to-image program is not as simple as it looks. You need to understand how to enter the right prompts, you need to have the right ideas to feed them in the machine. And you know, it's not like skills matter anymore in the actual world of art. It's not been a relevant factor since, well, modern art. I would say that the only area in which humans can still win the fight is in the physical world, the actual material world is where humans can still shine. Because an AI can produce great images, but it's just digital. And if you want to have it in the real world, you need to print it. And they do amazing prints nowadays, but 
The only thing that the machine can never replace is the confidence or the frailty of the human touch, the resonance of the hand within the medium, the imperfections, our human imperfections. So where are we? We've seen that the technology is moving fast and that it's going to be game changing probably. So who will be the winners and who will be the losers? If anything you do can be automated, if it's easily imitated, you're screwed. If you make, I don't know, anime character design for comic books, I'm sorry, but your job really won't last too long. If you make 3D models for video games, same thing. Soon an AI will just take your place and make it better and for a fraction of the cost. Everything that's based on quantity over quality, any image meant for mass consumption is going to be generated by a machine in the future. And AI will force a lot of creators to reinvent themselves, just like painters had to reinvent themselves after photography was invented. It will be a disruptive technology, but not necessarily a destructive one. Now let's talk about the big world of high-end fine art. As far as fine art goes, like big houses, galleries, etc., it will be business as usual. They'll sell anything and pass it as art. As I said in my older video, AI will produce visual originals presented and sold as authentic art, just like they did with NFTs. They'll find a way to sell AI art for exuberant amounts of money because that's what they do. They also sell excrements, garbage bags, empty squares. So the market value of an artwork is irrelevant in this world and we'll have the same show again, the next big thing, the next big AI thing sold as Sotheby's or Christie's, like when they sold people's NFT for nearly 70 million in what turns out to be a massive publicity stunt for NFTs. You can be certain that they'll try to do the same thing with AI art. And if you're a serious artist, you shouldn't pay attention to this. What they call the art world is not the world of the artists. It's the world of the art dealers and the collectors. It's not your world as an artist. In the background, talented human artists will still do their job as they always do. They'll use AI alongside their unique vision to create great art. AI generated art will become a new subcategory of art. The most talented artists won't necessarily be recognized for what they do. Business as usual. If you're an artist, that's pretty much how it's always been. Collectively, we'll have a lot of problems to deal with about AI, but for traditional artists, painters, sculptors, it won't have such a negative impact in my opinion. Artists using older traditional media will find new ways to explore their ideas thanks to AI, it will open new doors. Just like photography helped painters become better at being painters by looking for what's really unique about their medium, the AI will force artists and creators of all kinds to explore what's unique about their art. And more broadly, I think that this technology will be more and more integrated in our current creative tools. Like imagine a function within Photoshop, for example, that would allow you to tell the program what to do with prompts. Like, hey, remove this background and put this and that in this character's hand. Hey, expand this part of the painting that's hidden right now or invent something that would go here in this place where I, if I want to reframe the shot. You know, basic stuff that you can do manually today with great effort and lots of skills. It will be made easily and quickly by an AI. The AI can also be helpful in feeding a creator or a client with hundreds of potential variants for the same requests, which a human is incapable of doing. We can also imagine a sort of a like feature that would be with you when you scroll the web and that would learn your tastes every day and fine tune to provide you with the best results catered to your needs. 
ultimately only time will tell how this technology will impact art history. AI images will probably be everywhere in the future, mostly in ads. We're probably going to have to deal with image pollution in the future. We're already saturated with man-made images today, so I can't even imagine how overwhelmed we will be with images in the future if AI can take over. And maybe this mass production of images will be a good thing because we'll reach a point of saturation, a point of no return, and maybe it will help us reconnect with what being a human is all about. The masters of the future will be those who can create what a machine could never create.